2 a.m. and my apartment is finally quiet enough to film a video. So, uh, let's do this. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be making a track in the style of the one and only Dirty Palm. Dirty Palm's style is super bouncy and super unique and he's probably one of my favorite future bounce artists at the moment. But anyway, I'm going to be running through literally building the track right up from the ground, from the drums to the lead to the bass. Might use a few presets here and there just to make the video a bit quicker because otherwise we'll be here for four hours trying to make a bass and lead and all that sort of stuff because I'm not a very fast producer. But that's enough of that. Let's get into the video. So up first, we're going to be doing the lead, that iconic Dirty Palm lead. First up, we just make an 8 bar riser, go just in C because we're going to be working in MIDI later on. And we're just going to be using Spire. I'm just going to do that and then on Oscillator 2, and White Noise. Next up, we just set our pitch bend range to 12. And that's literally all we need for the spire section. And then come into our pitch bend, MIDI control pitch bend. For this, we're just gonna come just a little bit off the start and rise it right up. So we've got our eight bar riser. Now all we just go freeze track and flatten. Turn it up a fair bit. Perfect. Consolidate that. And now we just come into a brand new MIDI track and just drop it into a simpler. Now we're going to do a bunch of processing. But first I want to just get a melody. So I've got a melody that I, or I've already written. So otherwise if I was trying to write a melody on, like on camera, doing these sorts of melodies tends to take me fucking forever because I'm I'm just not very good at melodies to be honest all right so this is the melody that we've got and you'll see this isn't going to sound very good right now but once we do all our processing it's going to sound sick So now we just got to process the fuck out of it. So first we're going to go in with an overdrive. And this is going to sound sort of fucked for a little while, but once all the processing done, it's going to sound great. Now we'll come in with an EQ, just roll off some of the lows, and then we're going to get a compressor and come in and we'll compress it like this. And then we'll come in with an EQ3. Chuck this right at the start. So literally all this lead is, is just EQing and distorting. Then we'll come in with maybe another overdrive. We'll come in with a reverb. Now we'll come in with another EQ3 in here. And we'll come in with an OTT. So I'm basically just gonna run through and get this lead perfect. So enjoy the time lapse. So this is basically all the lead is. You can see there's a fair bit of processing on it, but it's all sort of just trial and error stuff and just finding what works and just EQing and distorting, EQing and distorting, and then some fairly heavy compression as well to get a really fast attack. This is what we started off with. 
pretty gross, just really doesn't sound like anything. And then this is what we've got. <laughs> So now we're just going to go through, get some drums together, get all that sort of stuff done and hopefully come up with something cool. <laughs> Alright, so that is all we're going to do for the drums for now. We are going to add a whole lot more in as we go, but I think we're going to go on and try and get a bass. And for now, we're just going to copy this down and we're going to see what we can find. I think I'm just going to use a preset for this and I think we're just going to use Serum. Alright, so th this bass is going to work for now. So let's start making a melody. find another top base for this. Um, back into Serum and let's see what we got. Alright, and now we just need some side chaining. So that is pretty much our bass and leads done. But one last thing we're going to do to our lead is just control the reverb a little bit. So we're going to come into our mixer and just the speaker on off. So my camera died and it's now the next day, but I did a bunch of work on the track off camera and this is what we've got. So in the drums, I just added in a few extra things. I added in some white noise hits. Some extra claps. And then I added in this drum loop as well. And then when it comes into the next part, these crash cymbals just come in. So all together, our drums are sounding like this now. And then the lead, I changed up the pattern just a little bit, just some of the notes so they sort of sat a bit better. And then did a bit of volume automation just to control the reverb a bit. And then finally on the lead, I just did a little bit of pitch bend automation just to sort of change up the notes a little bit. The next up, I changed up some of the bass notes a little bit just to make it sit a bit better. And then I added in this high end bass for the faster part of the track. And then finally, we've got these like really low gritty saw hits, which really help add something extra to the track. So all together, this is what we've got so far. So I think that's about it for what we're going to be doing for the drop. We're just going to go into a build up. So for the build up, first off, we've just got the same synth from the drop, but with the reverb turned right up and some bass clefts easy washout on it. We've got those same synth stabs from the drop. And then when we come into 
The second part of the build up, well, you'll see that they start rising up and get quicker. <laughs> So you can see there needs to be a whole lot more stuff added into this and we're going to do that now. I'm going to add in an impact. And we'll add that in here as well, just make it a lot shorter. And then we go again and we'll get like a white noise down lifter. Maybe this one. You also need a better kick. I'm not liking the way this kick's hitting. It's a strong kick, but I don't think it's right for the track. This could actually be cool. And we're just going to add on like a little click on top. And we're going to add on like another little like percussion sort of hit as well. It makes it a little bit more punchy. All right, so now that's done, we've got a kick to make it hit a little bit harder. We'll go back to our build up. All right, now we need a little like white noise sweep up thing. Yeah, this could work. Um, let's see what this snare build's like, eh? Okay, so that's sounding all right. That's sounding all right. Uh, we need some risers. Okay, cool. We're sounding all right now. We're sounding all right. Um, I'm just going to add in some crash symbols. Now we need like a real dirty palm sort of vocal. Pop it up. So I spent a bit of time just going through, trying to get everything to sound good, trying to get it to sound like dirty palm pretty much, which, I mean, it sort of does. You know, it's not terrible, but you know, there's a lot of things that Dirty Palm is just so good at. That's what, like, it's what is, makes his tracks unique. That's why there's nobody else like him. So, I mean, this isn't exactly like a Dirty Palm track, but I think it gets pretty damn close. I think so anyway. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think this actually sounds anything like Dirty Palm, but this is what we've got so far. <laughs> I think the job I did of this wasn't too bad. It obviously isn't exactly like a Dirty Palm track. It just doesn't have that Dirty Palm flavor to it. That's just what he's good at. You know, that's why there's nobody else making music like him or nobody that's doing it as good as him anyway. But I hope this helps you in trying to recreate this sort of style and hopefully you're not trying to recreate it exactly like Dirty Palm, but add your own flavor into it. Just using this sort of style is something to create your own sound. But anyway, that's all we've got for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, give the video a like, drop some comments, do all that sort of stuff, and I will see you on the next one.